الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خاتم النبيين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله Today is the 15th night of Jamaad al-Ukhra 1444 Hijri. With this relevance, let's listen to hadith number 15 from page number 5 of Maktabat al-Madinah's booklet, Blessings of Salat and Salam. Sayyidina Ubay bin Ka'ab radiallahu and humbly said that, O Messenger of Allah, I will give up all my orad and litanies and devote all my time in reciting salat upon you. Upon this, the Prophet of Rahmah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, This will be sufficient to remove your worries and your sins will be forgiven. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ala Muhammad. My question to you is, we want to pray with steadfastness. We make intention to do so time and time again, but cannot attain steadfastness upon this. Due to some reason, we become lazy and do not pray. So please tell us a way we can pray with steadfastness. May Allah Almighty give everyone the ability and passion to offer salah and you should look at the excellences of offering salah and the admonitions of punishment. One becomes subject to for not offering. Salah should also be pondered upon. This would also increase the passion of a person to offer Salah. I will herewith present 25 excellences from Maktabatul Madinah's book, faizan e namaz which has also been translated in English with the title of Key to Paradise. Salah is a means of Allah's pleasure. Salah is the coolness of the eyes of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Salah is the sunnah of the Honorable Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Salah is the lamp of the dark grave. Salah saves from the punishment of grave. Salah is shade in the sun of judgment day. Salah is ease for the bridge of Sirat. Salah is Noor. Salah is the key of paradise. Salah saves from the punishment of hell. Mercy showers by offering Salah. Allah will be pleased with a Salah offering person on judgment day. Salah is pillar of religion. Sins get forgiven due to Salah. Salah is a means of acceptance of duas. Salah saves from diseases. Body attains comfort through Salah. Salah leads to blessing and sustenance. Salah saves from immodesty and evils. Salah is disliked by Satan. Salah is companion of loneliness. In the darkness of grave, Salah makes the side of good deeds heavier. On the scale of Mizan, Salah is the mi'raj of a believer. Offering Salah at his due time is superior than all other deeds. The greatest blessing for a Salah offering person is that on the Day of Judgment, he will behold Allah Almighty. So there are many excellences for offering Salah and punishments for not offering it when we keep these in view and keep studying this book, faizan e namaz then inshallah we will develop a passion to offer Salah. Despite there being so many excellences and despite Allah Almighty making it fard upon us, if still a person does not offer Salah, then there's no doubt about the misfortune of the person. A person who does not offer Salah is an ill-fated and deprived person. May Allah allow us all to punctually offer Salah with steadfastness. Allahumma ameen. Sallu ala al-Habib. Sallallahu ala Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My beloved Sheikh, my family tells me to memorize the Quran by heart and I also want to memorize the Quran by heart. But when I heard of the punishment of forgetting the Quran after reading it, now I fear in case I forget it after memorizing it. My honorable Sheikh, how can we keep memorized Quran in memory and how can we strengthen our memory? MashaAllah, you fear for Allah. Marhaba, may Allah bless you more. Dear child, one should memorize the Quran and to keep it in their memory they should recite it every day. There are some people who recite one manzil of Qur'an every day. This way the entire Qur'an gets recited in a week. In a month four Qur'ans are recited. Or if a person at least recites one juz per day, 
This would help them keep their memorized Quran intact. There are some people who totally forget Quran after memorizing it. How would they preserve their memorization if they don't recite and revise it regularly? Frequent recitation will preserve it, inshallah. What is the litany to strengthen one's memory? There's a whole booklet written on this topic of Maktabatul Madina, in which many litanies regarding strengthening memory are mentioned. The litany I would suggest you for this purpose is the litany of Ya Qawiyu. So what you need to do is that after every salah, place your hand on your head and then recite Ya Qawiyu 11 times, followed by blowing on your chest. This is fairly an easy one. Another litany besides this is to recite Ya Alimu, Ya Alimu, Ya Hafidhu, Ya Hafidhu, Ya Nasiru, Ya Nasiru after every salah. So recite this five times or seven times or eleven times and then blow on your chest. Inshallah, with the mercy of Allah, the memory would get strengthened. Allah willing. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ala Muhammad. A question has been asked that which dua is better for us to ask of appearance, to make for us. When Imam Ahmad Raza Khan Rahimahullah would meet noble elders, he would request them to make dua of forgiveness in his favor. He said himself that he requests them to make dua of forgiveness. So in the context of duas, the dua of forgiveness is very important so that we get forgiveness from sins. In the same way, get them to make dua for the safety of your iman, dua for your forgiveness, dua for the goodness and well-being of the hereafter, dua for being safe from having a bad end. Importance of these issues is more. We just ask for duas for worldly things. Sayyiduna Imam Abid Dunya Rahimahullah has written a book entitled Al Manamat, meaning in accordance to the dreams. So he Rahimahullah has narrated dreams in that book. He's a very old saint. So a faith enlightening account is mentioned in his book. So a saint beheld the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam and requested him to make dua for him. The Holy Prophet والسلام, made dua for him and instructed him to include this in his dua. Allahumma khtim lana bi khair. This is well in your dua. Meaning, O oh Allah, grant us end on well-being. So the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam instructed to make this dua. But this was stated in a dream. We cannot call it to be a hadith. The Prophet والسلام, instructed this in a dream. What was the dua? Allahumma khtim lana bi khair. It's a beautiful dua. You too include it in your duas. I'll also try to do so. What was the dua again? Allahumma khtim lana bi khair. Meaning, grant me an end upon well-being, meaning upon goodness. And obviously an end with well-being will be only the one in which a person departs this world with iman. Allah forbid, if Iman is not with the person when he dies, meaning his end is not upon Iman, then that end is not upon well-being. Then within the context of well-being, there are two more cases. The first case which we spoke about where departing this world with Iman, this is end upon well-being. And the second case is upon piety, upon well-being, and being completely free of sins where all sins are forgiven and a person is completely purified and then departs this world. Such an end upon well-being is truly a great one. Medina, Medina. May Allah grant us all such end. Having said that, remember that this doesn't mean that you cannot ask your parents or someone to make dua for you for removal of diseases or unemployment or adversities, calamities, hardships or any other kind of issue or problem you may be facing. It's not like that. However, the priority should be given to the matters of the hereafter. Priority in our society is first given to this world and then to the matters of the hereafter. Whereas it should be other way round, where the matters of this world are given secondary importance. Keep this in mind and be wary of it. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ala Muhammad. After the idda, the sitting period of a woman completes, is it necessary for her to go to her husband's grave? It is forbidden for women to visit graves. They are not allowed. So whether it is before the Iddah period or after the Iddah period or at any time, a woman cannot go to the graveyard. And also they are not even allowed to visit the shrine of Awliya. Women can't go there. However, the woman who performs the Hajj pilgrimage should visit the blessed Rada of the Holy Prophet 
not only that she should, it is close to being wajib. The women will have to visit the court of the Prophet when she goes on the journey of Hajj. Other than this, where we see that women visit shrines of awliya in normal circumstances, this is forbidden for them. They have to avoid it. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ala Muhammad. Let's say there's a small child who urinates on the bed. After it dries up, can a peasant sit on the same bed and perform the recitation of the Holy Qur'an? At such an instance, if a shawl or another bedsheet is placed over it, bedsheets are normally of a thicker material, so lay down a bedsheet. Now if there's any impurity underneath it, then this wouldn't be a hindrance. Otherwise, the places of impurities have their own harms and evils. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ala Muhammad After performing wudu, how is it for one to wipe his face with his own sleeve? Wiping the water of wudu from the limbs in order to dry the body with the clothes that one's wearing himself is not appropriate. Wiping face or hands with the clothes that the person is wearing himself leads to the weakness of memory. One's memory gets suffered. However, it's not a sin in Sharia. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ala Muhammad In winter, a high neck jumper is worn inside and folded. How is it to offer salah in this manner? Salah will be valid and wouldn't be makru either. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ala Muhammad Some people say that during the time after the morning salah, meaning after Fajr salah, one cannot carry out the recitation of the Holy Qur'an because it is makru time. Therefore, the Holy Qur'an shall not be recited at that time. Is this true? You see, when the sun rises, the duration of 20-25 minutes after its rising, it's better to recite Salat or perform Dhikr during that time instead of reciting Qur'an. Recite Salat upon the Prophet or other litanies and wazaif can be recited. It is better not to recite Qur'an at that time. However, if someone does, it is not a sin at all. It is absolutely permissible. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ala Muhammad it is said that if a son is born, then it is the blessing of Allah Almighty. And if a daughter is born, it is a mercy of Allah Almighty. Is this true? Please guide us in this regard. Please pray for my and my family's forgiveness without accountability, preservation of our faith, and a respectful visit to the beautiful city of Medina. Jazakallahu khair. Wa'iyakum. Daughters are virtues, and sons are a blessing. Allah Almighty grants reward over virtues, Whereas there will be accountability over blessings. In other words, daughters are of benefit. Daughters are virtues and sons are blessings and for blessings, there will be accountability on the day of judgment. And we just ask for a son. There's no harm in asking for a son. But remember that we should not dislike daughters. Daughters come first. You'll see a slogan nowadays anyways, ladies first, ladies first. Whatever the ideology of the inventors of this slogan may be, but here it's not ladies first, it's daughters first. Just in case it confuses someone and they mix up both things. Daughter is something different and a woman in general is something different. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ala Muhammad My question in the court of the Honorable Sheikh is, how is it to use the cut money in a masjid? We have heard that the masjid in which zakat money is used, disputes break out there and imams do not stay there for long either. Please shed some light on this and guide us in this regard. When it comes to zakat, the condition for it is to make the rightful recipient of it owner of that amount. Otherwise, zakat will not be paid. If masjid is directly built with the amount of zakat money, this is not permissible at all. Zakat will not be paid. Forget about disputes and other issues. The only way in this case is to perform shari'i hila, meaning that give the zakat amount to a rightful deserving recipient. And now that very person takes the ownership of the zakat amount given to him and he then donates to a masjid. This is permissible. This doesn't lead to disputes and discord. It brings an end to them. If Allah forbids someone built a masjid directly from the amount of zakat money, still there's nothing of dispute and discord in this case. But the person who paid zakat, their zakat will not be paid. This is the issue. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ala Muhammad My question is, can walima be performed before the nikah? The feast that is offered before the nikah is not walima. Even if one calls it to be walima, it is not walima. What walima is? Offering a feast after 
spending the first night or the day after. And this very feast is offered by the groom. This is a sunnah. If it's from the side of the bride, it will not be sunnah. If it's from the side of the groom, it is sunnah. If the intention of acting upon the sunnah would be made, then he would be rewarded. And whoever is invited, it is sunnah for them to accept this invitation. Provided that nothing against sharia is going on over there, non-mahram men and women do not mix. Music is not played there. There aren't any musical concerts. Who knows what else goes on nowadays. Nonetheless, if someone performs walima with the intention of acting upon the sunnah, and there's nothing against the sharia in it and neither did he do so to show off and perform ostentation through this feast of his, it was free of all these impurities and the invitation was purely with a sincere heart. Now accepting the invitation is a sunnah. Not only a sunnah but sunnah mokkada as in he who did not accept the invitation has done bad. Now it is sunnah to go there. Eating or not eating is optional. Now for example you are fasting and you are invited to a walima and it is during the daytime. Then you may go to attend it and don't eat. Sit for 11 minutes or 12 minutes. Just attend it and then you may return. As then accept the invitation, go there and join the walima. Try to have this beautiful sunnah acted upon. If you go there and attend the walima with the intention of acting upon sunnah, then you'll be rewarded as well. This is the ruling in this regard. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ala muhammad. Honorable Shaykh, when question has been asked, that, are we allowed to take a book from the masjid to home in order to read it? Is it okay to do so? If the book has been donated for the masjid, then one can't take it, he has to read it inside the masjid and bring it in his use and benefit from it inside the masjid. You cannot mark or highlight anything in it and neither can you roll over the page or corner of the page as people normally do. Same caution needs to be observed for the Qur'an as well. No marking on it, no rolling of pages. You will normally find donated Qur'ans placed inside the masjids. Students read from those Qur'ans they may do so. But be mindful that its page is not ripped, corner of the page is not rolled, you do not write your name on it. And sometimes what the students do is that they mark the verses of the Qur'an indicating up to where their lesson is. This cannot be done even if the Qur'an is donated for the madrasa. And same is the ruling in case it belongs to the masjid. You can't write your name on it, you can't put any marks or signs on it, and neither can you roll over its pages. Not any kind of harm should be caused to it in any way. The question is that how can we become pious? And as a further request to please pray for the safety of their Iman. May Allah Almighty make us all pious. May He make us righteous. May He make us one who perform good deeds. In this case, we need to have sincerity in our intentions. All the pious deeds we perform should be only for Allah Almighty. And for this, we should adopt the company of the pious. Suhbate salih tura salih kunad Meaning the company of the righteous will make you righteous. Suhbate talih tura talih kunad Meaning company of the evil will make you evil. So refrain from an evil company. Adopt a good company that of the devotees of the Prophet. Your company should be of those people who possess the right beliefs. Be habitual of traveling in the Madani Qafilas. Take hold of the booklet of pious deeds from Maktabatul Madina or download it from Dawud Islami's website. There are boxes given for each question. On daily basis, reflect on your actions and fill in the boxes and then submit it to the responsible of Dawud Islami on the first of every month. This would inshallah lead to steadfastness over performing pious deeds and you will start becoming pious. It won't happen only by wishing. Let's say if a fruit is fully ready and hanging on the tree and you're just looking and desiring it, that it should just fall down in my lap or I'll open my mouth and it should just fall in. Then you will just keep waiting. So you will remain in the state of wait until you make any efforts to pluck it, provided that it is permissible to do so, remember. I'm giving you just a general example that until you don't make the effort of plucking the fruit, until then you won't get hold of it and you won't be able to consume it. It will not satiate your hunger. It will not satisfy your desire. Remember this. Try. As-sa'yu minni wal-itmamu min Allah. It's an Arabic proverb 
meaning the effort is from me and the completion of it is from Allah Almighty. The completion is from Him. Allah Almighty declares in the Holy Quran, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِيْنَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُلَنَا وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَمَعَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Translation of the Quran, Kanzul Irfan And those who strived in our path, we shall most definitely show them our ways. Surely, Allah is with the virtuous. So inshallah we'll strive and the path will keep getting clear for us. Sayyiduna Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhuma remarks that the meaning of this verse is that those who made efforts, those who tried in obeying us, we will surely show them the way to our reward. Since say intentions open the ways. Now if there's only desire but no effort, to become pious, then how would this be achieved? If we are told to refrain from a sin, then we are like, how can I? I am forced to do this. Do dua for me. Salah, I am eagerly passionate about it. But I just can't wake up for Fajr. My dear brother, let's presume you have a flight to catch at 5 a.m., which is even before the Fajr Azan, then tell me, would you still remain asleep? No, you wouldn't, isn't it? And for Salah, I just can't wake up. Try to reflect and understand. As in for this world, there's no problem in waking up. But for the sake of Allah, we just can't wake up. What is this? So when we have an eager passion for salah, for other pious deeds, then we will find the way itself. And nothing will be gained just merely with lip service. Let me mention to you an account of my past. Before, us friends used to remain restless. That there should be some sort of work. There should be this, there should be that, in relation to invitation to his righteousness. So we used to keep thinking about it in this way. Eventually, Allah Almighty gave us the ability and the work started in this way. And as it started, now I'm in front of you. And in which form am I in front of you? I may be thousands of kilometers away from you, but I'm still in front of you. I'm in every house at the moment, isn't it? Allah Almighty opened such ways for us, which by Allah I had never even imagined of that we will achieve such success in spreading invitation to His Righteousness and that Dawud Islami will spread in so many countries of the world and millions of people will become Salah offering and thousands of masjids would be built. I couldn't even imagine this in a dream. But remember, Asa'yu minni wal itmamu min Allah. Effort is from me and completion is from Allah Almighty. Completion will take place. It hasn't completed yet. Completion will take place. Allah will complete it. And if we attain the pleasure of Allah, then it is complete. And we don't know whether we received it or not. Inshallah, we will get it. If Allah gets pleased, then success is ours. So the concept of completion in spreading the work of religion is that it's still not complete yet. I still need to do a lot of work and can't be satisfied. And this will continue until my last breath. There's no surprise it may even continue after dying. There are different forms for work to continue even after dying. There are many forms such as religious books. The work continues even after the death of the author. It is Sadqa Jariya, continuous reward. So in this way, inshallah, even after passing away invitation to its righteousness will continue. Habib sallallahu ala Muhammad. Brother Zahir Ahmed is asking a question that can we make a dua in this manner that O oh Allah, whatever is good in my favor, grant me that and that which is not, make it better for me. In a hadith of Sahih Bukhari, in which the Prophet wasallam taught us to perform istikhara, he also instructed to make this dua, O oh Allah, if this is better for me, for my dunya and religion and for my good end, then write it in my destiny and make it easy upon me. Then grant me blessing. And if you know that it is not good for my dunya or religion, and its end is not good. Then turn it away from me and have well-being written for me in my destiny. In the commentary of this hadith, Mufti Ahmed Arkhan Naimi writes, 
meaning that do not even give me the ability to do it and create hatred in my heart towards it so that I don't even feel remorse on missing out on it. So save me from this act of evil and grant me an act of khair, an act of well-being, a noble act. For example, a person can pray in this manner that, Oh Allah, save me from this business or marriage and give me an alternative that is better for me. So whatever act it may be, dua in this manner can be made. If it's good for me, I may get it and not if it's not good for me. And may I don't even desire it, so that I don't remorse over not getting it. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ala Muhammad. My question in the court of the Amir of Ahl Sunnah is, when the Madani Muzakara is live, it is also aired on different social media platforms. Now, some people ask questions within the comment sections, and some people start replying to them within the comment section, which at times also leads to arguments and debates. So such people remain engaged and busy in the comment section. How do you guide such people? Please shed some light on this. Jazakallahu khairan. MashaAllah, this is a very good question. You're right, they keep sending hearts, they keep sending flowers, and then after that, they do engage in some questions, answers, debates, arguments, which is quite common. So, in this case, the actual essence of the knowledge of Islam cannot be gained. Because if you deviate your attention from what is being mentioned, even for a moment, you will miss the discussion. You looked at someone, pointed at someone, spoke to someone, during a religious discourse now, the speaker would have moved forward and you would have missed the discussion. So whenever it comes to a religious discourse, religious knowledge, we should listen to it with lending our ears and full focus. And at that time, do not do anything else. Like be fully attentioned and focused to it. If we try to adopt and listen to your religious discourse, only then we will understand it. Otherwise, there will be so many misconceptions. We'll perhaps understand halal as haram, and haram is halal. So may Allah make us amongst those who show respect to religious knowledge, and also those who watch us through various social media platforms. When people are watching on Madani channel, they don't face the disturbance of sending flowers or hearts or sending likes, but they do indulge in conversation. Those who are watching Madani channel at their homes, they can gain focus and attention only if they are watching it in seclusion. If there's someone with him, there would be some kind of conversation or gestures between them. There's high probability of this. Or the child will come and clung on to you. Or some family member will call you, giving you some instructions. Or telling you to do something. Now in the meanwhile, as you attend to your child who's clung on to you or listen to the instructions of your family, so much discussion would be missed by then. So in this relation, be very careful and realize the fact that those who object to you are not your own people. This is generally the case, as they want to deviate your concentration. Because Satan the accursed knows that the discussion that is taking place on Madani channel, the answers that are being given on Madani channel, if the person listens to them with concentration, then his hatred will increase for me. Satan understands this. Of course, we'll develop hatred for Satan the accursed, as we'll acquire so much Islamic knowledge and passion for piety which will bother Satan. So Satan uses such kind of people and provoke them to start an argument, knowing that the people listening are not wise enough, and they will start replying to the person, during which they'll be deprived of so much knowledge, so such people are Satan's friend. So such kind of people are friends of Satan. They deliberately start arguments, and they don't even have this much sense that this is not the place of argumentation. So, these are the satanic ploys through which they want to divert your attention. Neither do they watch Madani channel nor let others watch. And they also perhaps only watch it for this reason that they can pick up on any point, turn it into an argument and divert the attention of all these people who are watching Madani Muzakira on Madani channel through Facebook and other mediums. And we succeed in depriving them from acquiring knowledge. So those who do this are requested not to do it. Just watch it, watch the complete Muzakira. You will see that inshallah you will benefit. You'll find the goodness of the hereafter. And if you keep doing this, there will be no goodness to your hereafter. No reward either. This would in fact ruin your afterlife and hereafter. And you don't understand that Satan is making you do this? Satan is our enemy, an open enemy. So do not fall in the traps of your open enemy. And wherever the work of piety takes place, play a supportive role in it. And if you cannot play a supportive role in it, then at least don't become a hindrance. I'm saying all this for the betterment of you're hereafter.
May Allah Almighty allow us all to think about the betterment of our hereafter and those people who do not have an objection themselves are requested to just watch the Madani Muzakara and not entertain the objectors at all as replying to them would harm you. Let them do whatever they want to. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ala Muhammad Madani Muzakara Madani Muzakara